This is the best possible start to Power World. This works on single player as well as a multiplayer server. This is designed if you want to play with your friends to get you ahead of everyone else on, say, a freshly wiped server. If you are just joining in on a friend server who's already progressed, this guide will be the best possible start for you to catch up or even surpass him within just a few hours. There is no real faster or better way to start than this. For this video, I will be playing on normal difficulty. I'm not going to be playing on hard or custom, though this guide works just fine on hard. And of course, this guide would work even better on casual mode. But the majority of public servers are set to normal, and that is what we will be using. Once you have created your character, the first thing we're going to do is get some fast travel spots. So, I'm going to skip the cutscene here. No funny edits on the screen. Now, the very first thing that you want to do is we're going to go ahead and open our menu. And we're going to hit respawn. This kills our character. Yes, I know. That's right. We're dead. And uh, we're going to get some fast travel points before we do anything else. This will save us time much, much later. And it's more convenient to do it now. So we're going to do... Uh, we're going to respawn on the Marsh Island. So, Marsh Island. Just mouse over. There it is, Marsh Island. We're going to respawn here. And then we are going to get the fast travel. So I'm going to run over here. And then this is a fast travel. So we're going to go ahead and claim that. Now I'm going to respawn. There we go. We got a technology point just for getting that. And again, we're going to do this for everything that you see on the screen here. Now for the Ice Wind Island, we're going to have to go northeast a bit here. So we're just going to go northeast and around this wall. You could also just climb the wall, whatever works for you. And then there is a fast travel that is up this way. We didn't go far enough. Hold on, we got to go higher up on the wall. And uh, you'll be able to see it. It is right over here. I actually walked past it. There we go. That's the fast travel. Now, finally, the Sea Breeze Archipelago Castaway Beach is where we are starting the adventure. So we're going to respawn there and get this final fast travel. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to travel quite a bit of ways west while we pick up everything. Now, this is a disclaimer because this part of the guide might be patched. It might be worked around or it might no longer work in the future. Please refer to the description of this video or the pinned comment in the comment section if this is fixed or not. But what I'm about to show you is going to allow you to get very high end pals as well as a handgun as early as level 4 and you'll never have money problems in this game. You're going to be able to hyper speed level by skipping the regular pal spheres into mega spheres. And if this is patched, the rest of the guide after this segment will proceed as normal as if we did not do this step. So just be aware. So what we're going to do is unlock a very powerful early game vendor. And from here, we're going to be traveling west for quite a while. And we're going to pick everything up along the way. So this wood on the ground, stone. You don't need to mine anything. You don't need to punch anything. You don't need to fight any pals. But we are going to be collecting some materials. You can also talk to the guy at the campfire to get some just basic materials here. So I'm just going to skip that. There we go. We got some paldium fragments, which we can use. There's stone. Again, pick everything up off the ground as you travel west. And you're going to be traveling to negative 311, negative 655. So what does that mean? There we go. We're level 2. And uh, so what does that mean? So when I open the map, you'll see coordinates in the very bottom left corner of our map screen. So we want to go, again, once again, to negative 311, negative 655. So negative 311, be about right there, and then negative 655. So we're looking about, about right there. So um, I'm just going to put a marker there, and there we go. So that's we're heading towards this marker at some point. But you're going to travel west for a while, just, again, picking everything up. And you don't need to fight any pals. They're all, you know, mostly harmless. Now, if you do pick up a pal sphere, which will randomly be on the ground, go ahead and catch some stuff. That's totally fine. Just beat them up with your fists, you know, and uh, have fun. As you level up, I want you to put all of your points into carry weight. This is pretty important to do. You don't have to do it right now. You can do it later, or you can do it when you need the carry weight. But that's what we're going to be spending our points on. So I'm going to continue to travel west now for a little while. Now, if you want, you can pick up these chests. You don't have to. 
Uh, I'm not going to include them in my guide because these are completely random and you may or may not get a chest in the same slot. But these Life Monk Effigies, if you see them, pick them up because it will just save you time later. We're going to devote time to grabbing those, but right now is really not the time. But if it's on the way, which it is when we're traveling west, then, uh, you know, go ahead. And so far, I have traveled. Here's where we spawned in the fast travel. I've, I've just traveled along the coast west, and I'm going a little bit uh, north. That's all I'm doing right now. Now, as you pick up some PAL spheres off the ground, I want you to be capturing PALs of them. So this is just a level 2 T-Fit. Now, it's in the water. I don't want to fight it in the water. It's going to be evasive and dodge. And these cap Capridis, they're a little too strong. But these Chickpeas, you know, they're pretty easy to fight. And also, they're sleeping. So I'm just going to go punch one out. Uh, I've got two and then one, so I need to capture three things. This helps us level up. It's very important to do this early, so I'm just going to punch it down to low HP. And yes, it's going to be basically stun locked. That's low enough, and then we're going to throw a ball, and that should capture it. There we go. That puts us at level three. We're going to do the same thing to this level five. And uh, he did get a hit on us. That's okay. These things should not kill you. You should be just perfectly fine. This one's a little higher level, though, so it's going to take more punches. Also, I'm hungry and it's nighttime, so I am getting cold, but don't worry, we'll fix that. You won't die. You'll be just fine. All right, and then we're going to get this one down and then capture it. A little bit more, and there we go. I've got one more Pat Mega Sphere that I found, and we'll go capture something else. Oh, look, another one. Again, you just want to capture as many as you can right now. This is purely for levels. Now, as you kill the chickpeas, uh, you'll get some meat. You can just eat this raw. It's totally fine. Just fill up. It's, it's, it's completely okay. Your next goal is to get eight wood, one palladium fragment, and three stone once you reach this looking part of the map. So here's the map. Here's where we started. We traveled west and a little bit north along the coast. And here we are. Negative 300, negative 655 on the coordinates. You have trees, you have uh, stone, which you can also give you the palladium fragments. And if you, if you just looted everything along the way, you should have plenty of everything. So I have eight wood just from picking up sticks. 22 stone and plenty of fragments. I've still got some pal spheres to blow through. But what you're going to do now is push B and build that primitive workbench. So we're going to go ahead and just slap one of those bad boys down. There we go. And then we're going to craft the wooden club. Go ahead and start production on that. And uh, there we go. Yes. So crafting the club. All right. Go ahead and loot the club. And then you're going to open your technology menu which I'm going to hide the text here, and then you're going to learn the PAL box. There we go. We learned the PAL box. Now, use the club to grab some more wood. So just go ahead and club some trees. You're going to need eight wood for this. You technically didn't have to make the club, but it does make beating up the PALs easier to catch. So I only need seven more wood. And one more. Let me get my stamina back. That's fine. Just one more wood. And there we go. So now you're going to build the PAL box. So we're going to slap that down. And this is temporary. This is absolutely temporary. This is just so if we die, we can we don't have to run that entire route once again. We're not really making a base here. So don't worry about that. For those who know the game, we're not making a base. We're just using this as kind of a just a safety precaution of sorts. Now, before we proceed any further, we need to spin the rest of those uh, PAL spheres that we got off the ground. So, I'm going to go, I've got two left to do, everything's asleep, I could just beat on these land balls real quick and cap them, so, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. With the club, it's very easy. There we go, and yeah, I used the Mega Sphere on that one, let's get my stamina back. And again, we're purely doing this for levels. Nothing more, we're not using these pals in combat or ever for anything. Just for levels. There we go, hopefully that caps, I mean 93%, it should. From here... We're, we're level 4 now, by the way. From here, we're going to go straight west across this water. And it's a little bit tricky. It's a little bit confusing. Uh, so, if you angle it exactly where I'm at, and at this point, your, item, your items don't matter or anything of the sort. So, make sure that you have full stamina and you're going to swim along the water here. And you, you can use a shift if you want to sprint it. You know, use your sprint button. If you want, it's fine. And you're going to get about right here and get, get that stamina back. Now you're going to continue along the water here. But this is where it gets tricky. This is going to take most of your stamina to get over here. And you have to kind of get lucky and find a spot where you can stand on to rest. 
So I'm just going to swim over here now. And uh, we're going to just hopefully be able to climb up one of these little ridges here without running out of stamina. If we do die, it's okay because we have that pal box to respawn on. So here we go. I am now standing on this ledge getting my stamina back. And you're going to curve around all of this along the shoreline. You're never going to go up into here. It's too hot. We don't have armor for it. So go ahead and do that. Now, this part can be tricky. This part can be RNG. But you're going to follow the coast along the water all the way to the fishing village, which is over here. This is very important to do. There's a fast travel that we need to grab. And this is the only way to do it. If you go too far inland, it's too hot. You will take damage. So you need to stay along the shoreline also. There are humanoid enemies with flamethrowers. If they aggro onto you, just swim in the water. Their flamethrowers cannot hurt you as long as you are swimming. You are immune to fire damage from their flamethrowers because they, they try to catch you on fire. But because you're swimming, you can't be caught on fire. So they just sit there and do nothing. And if, an, if, if a pal aggros you, then just stay along the shoreline. Now there's a few things that you can do to like make a little safety save. And I'll show you that here in just a sec. So ever so often, if there's no pals around and there are no humanoids around, what you can do is open your map and then over here at the base, hit V to dismantle it. This will give you the ingredients back for the base. Then you can just put a new one down and then you just run up. You want to make it very close to the shoreline so you don't burn up. But this will allow you to save your spot if or when you die. And every so often, just put another one of these along the shoreline when it's safe to do so. And can, again, you're going to continue west all the way to the fishing village. Now, every time you die, which you probably will die, it's going to reset and re-roll and reconfigure all of the random enemy spawns, the humanoids, the pals, and so on and so forth. So, just keep at it until you get there. Another trick that you can do on single player is simply log out of the game to return to title and log back in. If there are no other players around on a multiplayer server, this also works so that you don't aggro these guys. But if you give them a kind of a wide berth, so to speak, while on the shoreline... They should leave you alone. It's the humanoids that'll chase you, and uh, eventually you will have to come to shore to get stamina, and they might kill you with the flamethrowers then, but if you, if you can micromanage your, um, your dodge rolls, your sprints, and just avoiding their flamethrowers, you should be fine. Once you've arrived at Fisherman's Point, this is what it looks like on the map. So, again, we, we made a, a little base here. We swam all the way over here. We made another base as a safety save. I died once, and but I made it to the Fisherman's Village. It's pretty simple. We're going to run through the village now and then get the fast travel point. And we're not going to do anything else here for now. But for we're just here to get the fast travel point the first thing because if we do it now, it's more convenient to have it done and over with before we start gearing up, before we start actually playing the game. Once we have this, we can always come back here. And there are some of the best vendors in the game at this little town. And some of the best, uh, again, it's not only just the PAL vendors, but it's, it's all the vendors. So there we go, we unlock the fast travel. Your next mission is to open your menu and then respawn, so now you're dead. And if you have that stick, don't worry, you're going to craft a new one. It's totally fine. And then we're going to respawn at Eastern Wild Islands, and we're going to travel west now. That's right up here on the map, Eastern Wild Islands. And then we're going to travel west, and the way you want to do this is you want to curve around kind of uh, towards this desert runaway guy here uh, because if you just go straight west, there's a there's a chasm, a chasm, whatever, however you pronounce it. And we're going to go to the coordinates 476, negative 124. But you can talk to this guy. He'll give you some freebies. There we go. We got some paldium fragments. You don't really need them, though. And uh, so we're going to continue west here, and I'll show you on the map where we are headed. It's a very short walk. So, I'm going to hide the tag. We'll, I'll just show you the walk. Why not? We'll just walk together. It's uh, Now, this area can be a little bit dangerous. Sometimes there can be wolves that will aggro and attack you. But it's it's fine. You know, once you put a pallet box down, you're pretty much safe. Also, you know, grab stuff off the ground. That gives you experience points. And also, if you are not level 4 yet, if you did not get lucky and get some pal spheres, kill chickpeas. Just punch them out. Kill them. You need to be level 4 for this next step. So, you can get to level 4 by just picking up junk off the ground. You can beat up uh, the chickpeas, the, the kativas that are around. I wouldn't fight a tansy with your fists. These things will rip your arms off. You know, you know, chimps, they're pretty scary creatures, okay? Obvi obviously, don't fight the, ri the rib bunnies. You know, don't fight any bigger creatures. The rush, rush roar here will aggro you. These things are violent, so stay away from that if you can help it. And again, we're going to continue along west. Got a little pal sphere here. 
and again, just pick everything up off the ground. And what we're going to do is when you are safe and you are not in combat, you're going to put down another base right here at the river. So again, there's plenty of chickpeas we can kill. Uh, once we get a club, we can club out the tansies if you want. And you can always capture them too if you have any pal spheres that you found. There's uh, lamb balls to kill. There's a pal sphere in the water there. I'm going to go ahead and pick that up as well. It looked a little wavy, but there we go. So what I'm going to do now is... I like to cross the river and then put my pal box down, but we're going to open our map and we're going to zoom out and disassemble this base because we no longer need it. And then we can put a new pal box down, put it very close to the river. Do not put it too far forward. So I'm going to put it as close as I can to the river here. And again, we're not making a base here. This is just a safety precaution to save us time for later. And we're going to finish constructing this. All right. So the next step is we're going to also make, you know, another primitive workbench, assuming you have the wood. And we're going to do a tiny bit of farming. Now, I would say just make a club and use that, um, which I need three more wood for. You don't, you could make a, a, an axe and a pickaxe if you want, but you don't really need to at this step. So here we go. Your next mission is to acquire 35 wood and 10 stone. There is plenty of wood around this uh, pallet box. Stone is going to be uh, east. We pass some stone. There's a stone node east here. Also, there's plenty of berries in this river to keep you fed and healthy so that you don't have to use respawn cheese to get back on your feet. So, again, just get 35 wood and 10 stone for now. Also, make sure that you open your technology panel and you're going to learn campfire right here on level 2. And because we're level 4, you need to be level 4 to learn hanging trap. And this is how we get weapons at level 4. Now, this is optional. It just makes it easier, especially on multiplayer servers. But you do want to uh, open the tech menu and learn wooden chest because this is the only way to, like, really perm your items in multiplayer. If you get killed and someone loots your stuff or you get disconnected from a server or something silly like that, you're going to you're gonna really regret not building one of these to store what we're about to do. And, again, this is just a quality of life thing. This is not our base. This is not permanent. This is simply to make sure that you don't lose a lot of time later on. And, of course, when you're here, you can go ahead and just store junk in here if you want. I'm just going to go ahead and eat this because my character is hungry. There we go. And the next place to go is... So, from this little river base, we're going to travel west once again to 464, negative 125. Which is really close by. It's super close by. It's this little gray circle here on the map. Uh, west of the little river that we're at. So, I'm going to show you the full map. This is where we uh, started Eastern Wild Islands. We traveled straight west... Cross the river, here's our base, and then here is the little area. So, uh, we're going to go ahead now, and there should be a black market trader here. There's like a, like a little campfire, we got some wooden barrels. Sometimes this guy is not here. If that is the case, log out, log back in. You can fast travel away, fast travel back, but he should always be here most of the time. So, here's what you're going to do now. You're going to open your build menu, and then go to your hanging trap, and you're going to put one uh, touching his foot. There we go. Now he's hanging upside down. Now you're going to do something very sadistic and build a campfire under him. And uh, yes, this guy is level 40. This guy will kill you if you attack him. But he's hanging upside down. And we're about to roasty toasty him. And fire does percent max HP damage. So he is going to now be on fire taking 290 damage a second. And this does take a little bit of time. Now while he is on fire... Aim up with your fist and give him a couple punches. Make sure that you hit him and that you don't hit the hanging trap and you don't hit the campfire too much. But make sure you land a few good punches on him because if you don't hurt him, then he will not drop any loot. And what you're going to do is you're going to let him roast to death. That's right. We're going to chill here and just let him burn, baby, burn. So what's going to happen now is now that he's about to die, he's going to drop two items for us. He's going to drop a very large amount of gold and a gold key. At this point, open your build menu, push the C button for disassembly, and disassemble the fireplace and the hanging trap. Now, this works for online multiplayer as well as single player. What you're going to do is, as long as there's no other players around in render distance also doing this, also, because it's nighttime, you're cold, but if you stand near his little campfire, you won't be cold, so you're safe here. Enemies won't come in. So, what you're going to do is open your menu and go to return to title. If there are other players around, this does not work. If you're playing a multiplayer server and this somehow doesn't work, all you have to do is fast travel away and fast travel back. That's all you have to do. So we're going to start game once again. And this is fast start video. That's the, that's the game. 
And then when you load back in, there is a chance that he will be back. Not always, but most of the time, he's going to be right back in his spot. And he will be perfectly fine and not aggro you and he's not angry. Now that you have, <laughs> you have a lot of money, by the way, you have 11,000 gold. What you want to do is talk to him. Go ahead and talk to him because he sells pals and he can sell very high level pals. So let's see what he's got for sale. A Petalia, this thing is great. It's level 3 planting, level 2 uh, crafting. Petalia is amazing because she can heal you with her ability. These other ones, level 2 handling, flam flambell, we, got, we can get better. Nightwing, you can go ahead and buy one if you want, but we can capture one of these pretty easy later. And Catrice is good for combat and nothing else. So we want to buy the Petalia. So there we go, we bought the Petalia, and boy oh boy is Petalia strong. It, again, it's, it's a heal thing. It's really good for bases. Absolutely do recommend Petalia. So make sure you go to your pal box, make sure it's in your active party. And uh, again, we're going to rinse and repeat hanging this guy and roasting him over a fire. Now, if you place it like this and you don't rope him, just disassemble it. You get it's a 100% refund. Okay, and then just try again. And then again, you just put a campfire on. Sometimes you can't put the campfire directly under him, but you just gotta keep trying to just keep spamming it until it lets you place it. And you should be able to place it directly under. And again, you're gonna roast this guy and rinse and repeat this process for quite a while. That's all we're doing. We're, we're, we're getting bank. Another good buy is Pen King. This saves you a huge long trip later on to just buy it now. Gale Claw is another good buy because you're going to be using this as your glider in about mid-game. Around level 2025-ish, I forget exactly, but we'll talk about that later in the guide. It is in the guide uh, to get Gale Claw. So I'm going to go ahead and buy Pen King now. I can't afford the Gale Claw. Uh, these other ones suck, and I'm, I'm out of money, but that's okay. We have infinite money, basically. Here's another good one. Lunaris has level 3 handiwork. This thing will help you craft things insanely fast. Absolutely buy one of these things. Absolutely. Sometimes his hitbox will glitch out and you will have to reposition the fire. He is no longer on fire, so just disassemble your fireplace. And then just, you know, put it back down. It takes a little bit, but there you go. Just make sure that he is constantly on fire. And yes, you can walk away while he is roasting if you want to go, like, kill other enemies and stuff. Like... While he's burning, one thing that I like to do is just... Let me make sure I get a few hits on him. I think I'm hitting him. It's hard to tell. Okay, there we go. We hit him. Now he's on fire. So, while he's on fire, you know, you have these high-level pals that you're getting from him. They're not so much high-level as far as advanced. So, again, you can just kill stuff with them. Like, go, Patalia, Use whatever that is. And there you go. That's some free XP for you. <laughs> and some, you know, ingredients, too, if you want. But yeah, just, uh, okay, he's not burning anymore. This one is, this this one's being tricky. But yeah, you gotta constantly make sure that he is on fire. And, uh, that, come on, that should burn him down. Anyway, just continue farming. Now, I don't recommend that you summon a pal to help kill this guy because your pals will do AOE attacks, which will break the hanging trap and the campfire. You don't want that to happen. So just make sure you punch him a few times and then let him roast. Now, I want to mention that Cryolinks here has Refrigeration 3. You're not going to need Refrigeration because I have a food meta that does not require Refrigeration at all. It is a waste of a pal in your base. Don't even bother. But if you want a second Lunaris for more handiwork crafting, just to have more crafters, absolutely. I'm going to buy another one just because it, they're nice to have. And remember, if you get hungry, there are berries in the river that you can eat. So I'm just going to go ahead and eat some of those. And then make sure that you grab your good pals out of the box if you want, because we don't need lamb balls, you know. Might as well put the good ones in. And then store all that money you've been farming. I'm at 64,000 so far. I can store the keys. The rest of the stuff doesn't really matter that ma much. But don't store the wood and the stone because you need that for your traps. Also, if the black market trader is not spawning, it is because your pal box is too close to his spawn. That's why I'm telling you to build it as close as you can on that river. Because, if you build it any closer, he will never spawn until you deconstruct your PAL box. Now, one thing about storing all your money is that you might not have money to, to buy, so <laughs> go back to your storage box and pick up that money. You definitely want a Warsect. I mean, level 3 Lumberjacking, and Warsect is a very powerful PAL to have just for combat purposes. Also, if you do this a bunch and the berries aren't respawning because of a server setting or other reasons, just put everything in your wooden chest and then respawn yourself because uh, it's annoying to do this with 1 HP and then you trip over the fire and then you die and then your items get randomly despawned. So 
put everything in your chest and simply respawn on your pal box and there we go then take it, everything back out and that's just a cheap and easy way to feed yourself very simple to do <laughs> now i recommend that you do this till you have about a hundred thousand gold though i did it till two hundred thousand because the more you do it the, m the better it is so once you have at least a hundred thousand or more it's time to leave and we're going to go back to that fisherman village and we're going to get one more pal from the vendor there. We're going to get a handgun ammo. We could also get a fire crossbow if you want. If you prefer a crossbow over the handgun, that's totally fine. But we're just going to disassemble everything here. And uh, well, I'm going to you know, grab everything out of here. And then we're just going to uh, once again disassemble that, disassemble that. We're not going to disassemble this yet because then we can't fast travel. We're going to fast travel all the way back to the fisherman's point. And then we're going to farm one more pal, and that is a level 3 kindling pal. I forget its name, but I'll show it to you when it shows up. From the fisherman's base, I just want to share with you the, the merchants real quick. This one will sell um, the weapons and ammo. But right now, behind them, you know, just going straight southeast, there's this guy, the pal merchant, and we're going to talk to him. And then we're going to look for... well, we don't have it here. Uh, these are all, that's Kindling 2, Kindling 1, Kindling 2. Kindling is the little fire icon underneath the PAL. We want one with three Kindling, so we're just going to log out and log back in to refresh its inventory. You can also fast travel away and fast travel back. If there are other players nearby on the server doing this, it will not work until everyone leaves the area. So, just a heads up there, but um, <laughs> we're going to refresh his inventory now and uh, see if he's got anything new for us. There we go, and uh, again, we got Pyron with Kindling 2, but uh, I'm gonna skip ahead until we find it. And here it is, Reptiro has a level three mining and level three kindling. So again, this thing is just absolute baller. It will vastly speed up your ability to uh, do some early game crafting, especially when you gotta make ingots and do cooking. This guy has you covered. He's also really good for combat. He is a mid to end game level pal. So with Reptiro purchased, it's time to make some other purchases and spend our money. We're going to go to this wandering merchant here. And you can see he sells the makeshift handgun and coarse ammo. You could get some other stuff. Too. The fire arrow crossbow was not bad. The reason why the fire arrow crossbow was so good is because when you catch pals on fire, it makes it easier to catch them. However, it has a very low range, so the makeshift handgun has a much superior range and is what I would recommend, so I'm going to go ahead and buy that because, I mean, you're level, I'm level 6, but you can do this at level 4. We have a handgun at level 4, bros. That's awesome. So, <laughs> I can buy so many bullets right now if I want to, but you gotta, you know, like, you're not buying one bullet at a time. I just want to, I just want to let you know that. So, uh, let's buy, I don't know, let's buy like 100. So, 111 bullets. 13,000, very cheap, and uh, check it out, we have 100, well, it is one It is one bullet at a time, so we have 111 bullets, I'm gonna buy 100, um, at least 200, you know, 200's pretty good, uh, again, you can't really repair this right now, this early in the game, uh, we'll just buy another 200, yeah, another 200 bullets, there we go, so I still have 110,000 gold remaining, well, <laughs> look at this, this is so ridiculous, we, we're starting the game with a gun, <laughs> and some very high level pals, this vendor, is uh, another good one because he sells mega spheres. We don't even need to craft the regular pal spheres. We can just go straight into mega. Also, you can learn ignis breath and flare store. Like these, these kind of change around. But uh, we don't need any of these ingredients this early in the game. But this is uh, also the best method to farm leather, bones, horns. You know anything you need. High quality pal oils. We got it all right here. It's already ready to go. You know how to farm gold at this point. So again, we could just buy 119 mega spheres. And we're set for a- I'm gonna do that because this is how we power levels with these mega spheres. We have a, we have a weapon, we have our mega spheres, it's time to start the game, guys. We have a whole party of really powerful pals. And uh, so to start the game now, we're going to travel to the Plateau of Beginnings. That is where we're going and because we're gonna set up a really nice early game base. Disclaimer, what you just saw was a huge power boost allowing us to get a gun at level 4. The rest of the guide will teach you how to play the rest of the game, assuming this is fixed, assuming this gets patched out, 
Pay attention to the comment section and the and the description of this video. I'll let you know if it gets patched or not, but the rest of the guide will be proceeding as normal. So the first thing you want to do once you're at the Plateau of Beginnings right here on the map, right at the start of the game, is talk to this NPC here. And he's, or she, I think it's random, uh, is going to give us tin wood. And there's some wood on the ground sometimes. First thing you're going to do is you're going to craft that primitive workbench. There we go. Now, if you've, uh, you know, you have a you have a little crafting pal that can, wow, okay, way off, way off. Go ahead and help me build that. It builds it instantly. <laughs> so, and then you're going to craft a wooden club. And, of course, we're not going to craft it. This thing will, boop, it's done. There we go. You grab your wooden club, and then you're going to kill pals along the way as we travel northeast. Now, obviously, um, <laughs> I did the quicker start where I have a handgun, and uh, just pick up stuff off the ground. Pick up these berries, pick up these pal fragments. You want plenty of berries, and uh, kill pals along the way. <laughs> obviously, you're going to have to club them if this got patched, but... <laughs> We have a gun, so we can just blast them. We can just instantly... What are you doing? Boop! <laughs> um, it's good times. It is good times to be fully armed. You know... <laughs> it's too funny, man. Oh my god, there's been a murder! Oh, there has been a murder. Again, just continue killing and looting everything along the way. And uh, you'll notice that I'm about to be at carry capacity, but I haven't used any of my stat points, so... We're going to put all of our stat points into carry weight for now, and I'll let you know when to change this. Around level 10, I am currently level 6, but we're just picking up stuff off the ground, and we're killing pals. That's all we're doing right now as we travel northeast. So again, just picking up stuff off the ground, killing pals. Very simple and easy mission. And yes, it is nighttime, and yes, it is cold. That's fine. We can make a campfire if we want to get warm. The cold is not very threatening this early on in the game anyway. But yeah, it will drain our HP, but we have a campfire. We're totally fine. We're totally fine. We also have a pal that can just fully restore all of our HP. Well, 400 of it at least. So again, we're continuing to travel to the northeast. Now, what you want to do is we're going to make a base very shortly here, and I'll show you that in just a bit, but I'm just going to continue just blasting at all these pals with a freaking handgun at the start of the game. These who crates, they don't stand a chance. There we go. <laughs> so easy. Oh no, the, the daydream is mad. Just shoot them. Now, you can club these. You can club these. It will take a little bit longer, but um, again, I, I don't think they're going to patch the gun thing. It's it's too good. It's too funny. Uh, just kill them all. There we go. Grabbing all their stuff. All right, it's time to set up a base. So this is the easiest way to, to look at this, right? This is a lake, and at the very top left of the lake, it turns into a river. Right at the point where it turns into a river, you want to go directly north and up to about where I'm at. This is 222, negative 469. And we're going to make a base here. We're going to make a real actual base here. And the reason we're making a base here is because it has all the resources we need. It has wood, it has iron, it has stone, it has paldium fragments, and it has berries. This is the one of the best possible early game locations that you can possibly find. But if you're playing multiplayer and someone's already set up shop here, just go across the street, there's there's the same stuff, and go down the road a bit, there's the same stuff. If that's not the case, you will have to build elsewhere, which uh, you're going to have to figure out, because, you know, just find somewhere with berries, stone, iron, and wood, and, and, and then you're all set. So to make a base, we're going to go ahead and build the PAL box. And so I want to make it a little bit closer towards the road, and so that we ha we can build more towards the road. Now, another reason we're building in this specific location is because there is a wandering trader that will sometimes visit this specific spot. So building here is very beneficial. So again, it, the, the terrain's a little tricky, but you'll you'll be able to find a spot. Just uh, just keep hunting around, you know, spinning around until you see that that blue uh, approval, and I'll meet you there. Oh, I forgot to mention, if you have that old base, you gotta disassemble it, that's why it wouldn't let me build, so we're just gonna hit V on that, disassemble it, and now I can place the pal box, or I should be able to place it once I find some nice grounded flooring. So whenever this, again, turns blue, just kinda hunt around this little area here until you see it turn blue. It shouldn't take too long. If you find yourself low on HP due to the cold, just throw out Patalia, use that heal. Now, of course, if you uh, weren't able to do that fastest part start of the guide, you won't have Patalia. 
Uh, so don't worry about that. Just make a campfire and warm yourself up. Here's the next step. So you're going to open the technology tab by hitting the tab button, click technology at the top. You're going to learn everything at level 2, level 3, and level 4 except alarm bell and hanging trap. Now, you would have already learned hanging trap for the quickest start part. And then you should be level 5 by now by killing pals up to this point. And uh, you're going to learn berry plantation and the ranch, which we're not going to use for a while, and the normal parachute, which we're rarely going to use, but you need to learn it anyway, just as a safety precaution. Here is your next mission objectives. You're going to build a wooden chest near the pal box. You're going to be building a lot of these wooden chests, and uh, let's go ahead and just get it right about, let's see, just wherever the game lets you place it. Now, it's saying that it's too close to a special boss or facility. That's, that's totally bogus, so, there we go, and I accidentally wasted a bullet there. It's fine, we know how to get more bullets, and then go ahead and, uh, I, I have a, I have a pal that builds. Let, let them take care of it. And it's attacking the who crates. <laughs> no, <laughs> no shooting. Alright, and then get this thing back on build duty. Katavias, Kativas nearby will help you build if you don't have a Lunaris, okay? All right, then you're going to make a primitive workbench near the chest. You will need the primitive workbench, so we're just going to make one near the chest. And there we go. <laughs> Again, make your pals do the building. That's what they're there for. And then we're going to build a stone axe and a stone pickaxe and some cloth. So there's the stone axe. Go ahead and start production on that. And there we go. <laughs> and the... Uh, nope. I have uh, summoned this incorrectly, so now we do the pickaxe. And again, these should auto-equip, so we have the club, the axe, and then the pickaxe. And then we're going to make some cloth, so uh, just two cloth. That's all we need. There we go. All right, looking good. Now we're going to make the cloth outfit so we won't be cold anymore, and it's a little bit of armor. There we go. Make a nice cloth outfit for us. Now we have some clothes. All right, we have a we have a gun. We have clothes. You know, we have a base. We got really powerful pals. Everything's looking up. Now it's time to mine some wood and some stone. And if you have Warsec, just have him chop some trees for you. There we go. So while he's doing that, I'm going to mine this stone here. And then we're just going to throw it in the storage box near the pal box. Just feel free to, uh, you know, grab as much as you can. And, uh, this step doesn't take too long, you know, just, just farm a bunch. Now you're going to craft a common shield. Let me just swap out here. So craft a common shield, which is pallium fragments, wood, stone, and fiber, which you should have by now. Go ahead and, excuse me, I need you to build that. There we go. Get to work. <laughs> and you can also help them build too, that way it's a little bit faster. So there we go. And then return. And then we're going to build the stone spear, assuming you don't have the pistol. Okay, if you have the pistol, you don't need a stone spear. But for the sake of the video, we're making the stone spear because we're replacing the club with it. It's way worth replacing your club this early. More durability and more reach. So we can just go ahead and discard the club now. We don't need it anymore. Now, again, assuming you don't have a crossbow or a gun, you're going to craft the bow. So we're going to go ahead and craft the old bow. There we go, and craft, craft, craft. <laughs> it's so much faster with the help of the pals. And then you're going to craft uh, about 60 arrows or so. So again, that's 20, 40. Well, not quite 60. We'll have to farm some more, but uh, again, so you would have your pal do this while you go chop wood. So, so while she or he does that, it's time for me to go farm. That's just kind of how you do things here. You know, you got to work in tandem with one another. You can't just sit there at the bench. But 60 arrows, more than enough, but of course, you know, for our playthrough, we, ha we do have the, uh, the gun. We had some loot here on the ground, some berry seeds. Again, we're just uh, going to throw that into the box here. <laughs> and there we go. Uh, we got the arrows. Next up, you're going to want to craft three straw beds. So we're going to take the, the straw beds here, and I like to place these on the edge of the blue line. So we're just going to put one there. And yes, I, I know I did that wrong. And let's see, overlaps with another character, whatever. And there, so three straw beds. And then we're also going to do the feed box. I like to put, eh, let's we'll put it right there. There we go. And then we have a war sect working on that. I'm going to take Lunaris and then have her build one. And then I'll build one. Everybody's building right now. 
There we go. And again, you can have them do the building while you do the tree chopping, because you can, again, tr chop trees way more efficiently here. But um, there we go. So everyone's building up. And if you're brand new and you don't know how I have both Warsect and Lunaris out, well, I open the Pal Mox and I put Warsect into the base slot right down here. Next up, you are going to want to build two berry plantations. So this is mostly just to upgrade your base, as you won't be using this too much, but try to find somewhere on the outskirts, preferably. There's one, and let's see if we can get this. Again, it's a little tricky sometimes, especially with <laughs> uh, how things are, but again, just find a good spot for them. And yeah, you could build foundations to build these on and stuff, but there we go. So that's two, and then have them build it. There we go. Get to work, wages. Also, in your feed box, you're going to be putting cooked berries, but before that, we need to place a campfire, and you want to place it away from everything else so far. Way off over here in the distance, I'm just going to put it right over here, and then I'm going to have my pal build it for me. There we go. Also, it's on fire. Oh no, <laughs> get back in the ball. Okay, and then you're going to you're going to bake you're going to cook baked berries, all of them. So we're going to start production on that, and then well, this is where we have. Our fire one, which I don't have ready. And if you don't have a fire pal yet, there's some nearby you can get, but I have Reptiro, and uh, this big boy is just gonna speed cook them. So yeah, just let it, just let them cook, <laughs> let them cook. And then again, just continue harvesting around the base, clearing some trees out. Uh, you know, just fill up those storage boxes. I built a second storage box, and yes, my uh, axe just broke. Also, my pickaxe is nearly busted. We'll fix that in a sec. So obviously to repair things, you'll make a repair bench, so I'm just going to put this over here. Doesn't really matter too much where, and this will take a bit to build, but here comes Warsec to help us out and get that repair bench going. Using the repair bench requires way less resources than crafting a new set of tools. For your starter tools, it's not super important, it's just nice to have. Also, Warsec is now planting berry seeds, that's very nice of him. So let's go ahead and uh, we want to make sure that we have enough food here. So this is fully cooked. We're going to acquire the baked berries and we're going to put the baked berries into uh, this little feed box here. We don't want regular berries. We want we want the baked berries in there, which um, there we go. Put them all in there. The reason why we want baked berries is because they give sanity. Almost no other starter food in the game gives sanity to your pals. Except baked berries. Yes, you could feed them raw meat and stuff. They give you higher nutrition, absolutely. But they do not restore sanity. If you don't want your pals getting overworked and stressed out, you will make sure to give them baked berries. That's the main food we're going to feed them. Next up, it's time to make a bed for you, the player character. And to do that, we're going to, you know, just do a little work around real quick. So as far as your bed goes, you can place this anywhere on the outskirts. So here's how we do it. You're going to need to build a little bit of foundation first, and the way to, to be able to place a bed is as follows. We're going to take a foundation and place it down, and then one wall, preferably there, so I kind of want to unsummon this foundation now, and just move it a little bit further out, you know, just make it a little bit more pretty, whatever. There we go. And then we're going to do one wall, just like that, and then a roof overlaps with another object or character. Hmm, is it the tree that's in the way? I might have to chop this tree down. So let's just get this tree chopped, and then we'll put the roof down. <laughs> Timber! We could always use more wood, especially for now. We have pals that will mine this stuff for us later. There we go. Get that tree out of here. Get that roof back up. There we go. Now that we have this little U-shape, you know, C-shape, whatever, we can now place a bed in it, and there we go. Now, obviously, in multiplayer... You would want a little more protective base than this, but uh, until they add PvP, you're completely safe. There you go. You can now sleep in this bed. No problem. You don't even need a full house or anything of the sort. So that uh, solves that problem. Now you can upgrade your base. So we're going to go to the PAL box, or we're going to go to base upgrade, and then we're going to get hit base upgrade. And then, hey, we just did that. We're going to do base upgrade again. And then we already did that, so base upgrade again. And now we need to deploy a work pal to the base. Well, we already have some of those. So we can just uh, open the, the pal box management menu here. And, uh, you know, we can put a Lunaris to work. There we go. We can put a uh, Petalia to work. And uh, we can put a Pin or Reptiro to work. There we go. We have four awesome, you know, pals. You know, you, you can literally put whatever you want. And then we're going to uh, upgrade it once again. There we go. So now we need to build the PAL gear, workbench, and a statue of power. 
But you're really not leveled up enough for those yet, so we're gonna go adventuring a bit. Now, if you didn't do the early part of the guide that gives you mega spheres, you're gonna have to craft some pal spheres. So you're gonna need to do some farming around the area, get those paldium fragments, wood, stone, and craft a whole lot of pal spheres. I mean, a whole bunch. You're gonna want a ton of those things. And if you travel south here, there's plenty of paldium right here that you can grab. And there's plenty of wood and plenty of stone all over the place. This place is absolutely loaded. But what you're going to do now is you're going to be traveling west, kind of northwest a little bit, to get to the next fast travel point. And along the way, well, we're going to, uh, we're, we're going to capture some pals. You want to capture ten of everything. This is how you level fast. And I accidentally killed that one, but uh, you get the idea, right? So we're just going to poke these chickpeas a little bit, hit them with the spears. And again, this is how we speed level. So you can see in the bottom right, I've captured three chickpeas in total. And uh, now I've captured four. That'll be number five there. And uh, the Who crates, you know, they're a little bit tougher. But hey, we, you know, we have a gun. <laughs> and we have Mega Spheres. They stand absolutely no chance. So again, here's a Fox Spark. Uh, also, you can shoot them and they'll aggro you so that they won't run away. But when they see you have a gun, they're going to run. They're scared. They are very scared creatures. But you're going to just continue along. Ca don't fight this. Don't fight this Mammarest. It's too strong. Even with your pistol, you can't kill it. So don't worry about that right now. Also, if you're very far away, the pistol has, uh, it has like falling damage. So uh, we can shoot these Crimises here and get them a little bit closer. But if I shoot these chickpeas, they're going to die. So <laughs> they're a little too close. They take way too many hits. Again, so just capture 10 of everything at the moment. And we have a shield. We have a dodge roll. You know, we're, we're okay. And, uh... <laughs> Yeah, so there goes my shield. Probably not a good idea to fight two of these at once, but it's fine. And dodge. And there we go. So again, this is just how we're going to be leveling up. We're going to be leveling up for a little while. Just grabbing stuff along the way. And I guess that who crates didn't get captured. So uh, again, just run around capturing 10 of everything that you can. Now, as you travel west, you'll get to this fast travel point, which is located right about here. Which is, again, west of our base. So go ahead and pick that up, and remember, because it's nighttime, there are different pals out at night, so feel free to, uh, you know, capture them as well. They're, you know, it's a lot easier to capture them now than later. Uh, also, I don't really have a, well, we have the bow, so I should probably put on a bow so that I don't, you know, <laughs> kill this with my pistol. And there we go, so we can pelt this. Again, just capture everything. That's your goal right now, capture 10 of everything. And remember, if you see these life monk effigies, pick them up. Go ahead and just grab them as you see them. No reason not to pick them up now. Now, once you hit level 10, again, you should be putting all your points into carry weight at this point, which would put you at 750 carry weight. I have a pal that's giving me 80 bonus carry weight, but um, you should have 750 carry weight by level 10. So at level 10, we're going to put start putting points into stamina so that we can climb bigger walls, we can fly longer when we, when we get a flying pal and all of that stuff. So level 10 to 20 is all into stamina. So as you travel along collecting pals, go ahead and from this grassy behemoth, you can travel west and then north to the Tower of Rain Syndicate where there is a fast travel here. And then I, you can either continue north and northeast or you can continue west and grab those fast travels. It depends on how many spheres that you have left. So right now I have about uh, 83 mega spheres remaining, so I'm just going to keep traveling north. Also, just a reminder, if you ever get low on arrows, you can always just anywhere you want, pop down a primitive workbench and craft some arrows. So again, there's plenty of wood and stone all over the place. You don't have to sit there and uh, be out of arrows and not have a ranged option. So, again, I'm just going to continue getting fast travel points and getting 10 of every pal. There we go. In the balls you go. <laughs> now, one of the more powerful pals you can get early game and even in game if you can get over 100 of them is the life monks here. Because they have an ability where they can uh, basically give you a submachine gun very early on in the game. So you absolutely want to farm these guys. And this one's running away so I can get a ranged attack option. You're going to, even after you capture 10 of these bad boys, capture all of them. Always capture life monks. You're going to need 112 of them, I think is the math, in order to fully max out a life monk. So grab every single one you can. They are absolutely necessary. 
Now, at this point, I have just run around all throughout these zones. I did not kill the Chillet yet, even though I could with this handgun, but that's for later. I've run all through this area, just capturing everything I could. I don't have 10 of everything. I'm not even really close, but I'm already level 18. I'm going to fast travel back to the base, and we're going to we're gonna upgrade the base some uh, because I am out of Megaspheres. I'm just about out of Megaspheres. I have six Megaspheres, and yeah. So, there we go. It's time to do more crafting. Now, it is nighttime, and your pals do sleep at night. Also, my armor is damaged, so we're going to repair our stuff if we can. Now, some of the stuff we can't repair, like this handgun. Like, this is, uh, I don't have these ingredients yet, obviously, but we can repair our spear, our bow, our armor, which we need some cloth, which we picked up plenty of cloth just capturing pals. So, again, we can go ahead and just craft all of this cloth. Let's max that out. And uh, put, you know, one of our crafting pals to work here. And again, your your other pals, they won't be working at night. They're going to be sleeping. So, uh, again, they did a lot of mining here. I'm just going to go ahead and pick everything up that they didn't pick up. And look at all these trees that they, uh, they harvested and iron and stuff. And so, we're just going to do a little bit of cleanup duty. And to put everything in the chests. And they did a pretty good job, you know, clearing out the base. Also, now I'm... A little bit overweight, but that's okay. We can uh, we can walk our way back to the chest, no problemo, and do a little bit of tidying up. Now, since I ran out of arrows on my first adventure, I'm going to have uh, more arrows crafted. There we go. And again, that is giving us experience points as we do this. And now, also, I'm going to open this up, sort by a pal deck, so everything's nice and organized. And I'm going to pick the best life monk we have. Sirius is pretty good. Let's see, power of Gaia. What does that do again? It's been a while. Earth damage attacks. Uh, workaholic is uh, sanity draw. We don't care about that. We want one for our party. Conceited, work speed, don't care. Uh, serious is work speed 20%. Uh, I, again, we don't really need any of those, but uh, we're going to go ahead and pick this one anyway, and it's going to be it's gonna be in our party. You, you want a life monk in your party. You want this leveling up alongside you. It gets insanely powerful later. Here is your next mission objective. You're going to open the technology tab and learn pal gear, workbench, and statue of power. Then you're going to learn logging site. So let's learn that together. We got Palgear Workbench, Statue of Power, and then you're going to learn logging site. There we go. Stone Pit and the Crusher. This is level 8. Now, we're going to make a statue and we're going to increase our capture power. So here we go. We have Statue of Power. We're going to grab this and we're going to place it down. And this doesn't have to be a permanent fixture in your base. You can really put this... I would put this off to the side where it's not really like... Uh, where it's out of the way. I like to put it near the bed. Just because like all the stuff that I do that the pals don't really touch, I put on one side. So we'll just put that there. And then uh, get to work. Build it. And yes, they're all going to swarm it and build it super duper quick. There we go. And uh, yeah, they're all happy. All right, cool. So again, I have it facing the wrong way, but whatever, who cares? Now you're going to use it to level up your capture power. There we go. Ta-da! And we'll get more life monk energies in a little while once we learn how to fly. Next up, we're going to make two more straw pal beds since we have five workers and only three beds. You know, some of them aren't too happy. So we're going to go ahead and again, just plop down a few more of these bad boys. I like to put them on the edge. Of the screen here it says it's overlapping with another object but whatever we got it so there we go and then this tree is kind of in the way but it's fine and then we're going to make a pal gear workbench which is under production there it is pal gear workbench and uh this is one of my crafting tables so i just i like to put all the crafting tables kind of together that's just how I, I tend to do things and uh we'll just move this well we'll put it over here along this little ridge here why not and there we go. So, there we go. That one's building. This one could build too. And they're all building. Oh boy. Now, it's time to upgrade that PAL box once again. Go over here. Hit that base upgrade. And upgrade that PAL box. Now, make sure that you have your campfire cooking mass berries. Just max those suckers out. Always be cooking the berries. Where is our, um, <laughs> Reptiro? You'll probably have a Fox Spark if you don't have the Reptiro. The Fox Spark cooks just fine. It's just not as fast as Reptiro. So, there we go. Make sure that we have plenty... Hey, what's he doing? Is he... He's on a short break right now. Okay, he'll cook them later. <laughs> now, it's time to build the Crusher, the Logging Site, and the Stone Pit. So, the way I like to do this is I like to build the Stone Pit next to the Crusher. It just makes things a lot easier. I do need more Paldium Fragments, it says. So, I gotta go farm those. 
By the way, sometimes your mobs, your 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 workers will get like stuck on stuff or just misplaced. Just put them in the box, take them back out. That's how you can resummon them and reset them back to a nice position. There we go. Also in the feed box, make sure that you take out any red berries that your pals will be putting in. They'll automatically, see they're automatically putting regular berries in there. You only want them eating baked berries. You can prevent them from doing this by splitting your stack of baked berries and filling all the slots. But it's only a temporary fix. Now, I like to build the stone pit right next to the crusher, but I also put a storage box right next to the stone pit. Because sometimes, you're gonna have so much stone here to acquire that you won't be able to move. So if you just turn around, you put it in the box, and then you can move again. It's really, really handy so that uh, you can just have more freedom of movement. Now, of course, you can just put a storage box in between your logging site and your stone pit to use as both. Uh, but it's it's just how I do things. I just like lots of storage boxes because the pals, sometimes they'll just put it in the boxes automatically, and sometimes they won't. At this point, go around the game, capturing more pals, crafting more pal spheres, and getting more fast travel points until you are level 18. Once you're level 18, you're going to learn the following from the tech tree. This is a lot. So I'm just going to put it here on the screen for you. And you can pause the video and click all, click to learn all of these things. And if you can't see, like, Celeray's gloves, you have to have caught a Celeray. So go to just fast travel real quick. I'm going to show you on, on the screen here. Just, just fast travel to, like, any of these areas, like uh, the Seabreeze Archipelago. There are plenty of Celeray's around here. If there isn't, fast travel to another, another spot. They're all along the coastline. Uh, so that's a T-Fence, but uh, they're the floating little, I don't know, they're just like floating little stingray little creatures. And if you don't see any, you can fast travel between Marsh Island to search for them, and then fast travel back, and that's going to refresh the pals in the area. So just bounce back in between until they spawn. Also, if there's no one else in the area, you can just simply log out of the game and back on. This also works in multiplayer, so... Uh, right now, it's still that just the T-Fent, but uh, if we go north here uh, from the Seabreeze Archipelago, there should be a bunch just kind of floating around. So, uh, here we go. Yeah, here's some Celerays. So, just capture them, hunt them down, uh, whatever it is you need to do. But this will be your glider, and uh, this is why I didn't really have you craft a parachute earlier, um, even though you did learn it for safety reasons, in case you wanted to do some exploring. Also, these things can be a little dangerous for some reason. So, I don't really want to kill him with the gun, but uh, they're giving me no choice here. Yeah, they're they're about to kill me. <laughs> uh, all right, let's... Okay, still won't capture it, huh? Like, what about now? There we go, we'll use the Mega Sphere, that's fine. Also, try to, Pingolits are good, the Fuarks are good. They're like little duck creatures, little blue duck creatures. Those can help you water things. But yeah, definitely get Accelerate, it's your glider. Here is your next set of objectives. You're going to make the hot springs and the primitive furnace. I would suggest making the hot springs away from most activities. Uh, near the beds is fine. And then, uh, you know, smelting your smelter, your primitive furnace, make that away from the campfire. And uh, after that, you're, you have a high-quality workbench, the medieval medicine workbench, and then upgrade the PAL box again. If you have any pals, for whatever reason, that just aren't regaining sanity, either they're, they're not washing in the hot springs or they're not eating the berries, you can simply just put them in your party, and then you can feed them the berries from your inventory. So I have some baked berries here, and uh, we can just make him eat the berries. Now his sanity is back to 100. So that's the easiest and best way to take care of these pals, uh, if they refuse to feed or bathe themselves, that is. Your next objective is to make a cooler box and a sphere workbench, and then you're going to craft Celeray's gloves and Nightwing's saddle. So one weird ingredient is the ice organ. Now these come from the ice pals that you've been killing and capturing. But remember, we have a vendor unlocked at the Fisherman Village. You can simply go buy as many ice organs as you want. You don't have to manually farm them if you don't want to. Now, if you wonder where you get PAL fluids, it's water PALs. Just kill water PALs, you'll get plenty of PAL fluids. Next up, you want to learn Life Monk's Submachine Gun and Eek the Deer's Saddle. These are the next two items that you want to work on. Also, while you're at it, go ahead and put down more straw beds because uh, we have ten workers now instead of five. So, again, just put down five more of these. They'll run over and make the beds for you. 
And this is what your adventuring party should look like. You should have a life monk, a celery, and a nightwing. The other two are optional. Once you've crafted the Ake the Deer saddle, here's the here's how movement now works. This is what your party looks like. You won't have you might not have the Lunaris, and that's fine. But uh, other other than that, every, your party should look like this. You summon the Nightwing when you need to fly. So we're gonna you know you can fly now. You can fly and you can shoot an air cannon and you can snipe enemies and you can pretty much farm most of the game pretty easy at this point. So this allows you to now farm these effigies. Also. You have an Ichthadir, which will allow you to move on the ground much faster than normal by using the charge attack here, the ramming attack. And that's your ground movement. Also, it lets you farm ground, you know, pals much, much faster and more efficiently. And you also have a ranged attack, too. And you'll also get air cannon later, I believe. You also, for combat, have the life monk, which is a very vicious creature. But most importantly, it is now your submachine gun. So now you just shoot everything to death with a submachine gun. This doesn't cost ammo, and you can just destroy everything super duper quickly. And this only gets stronger as you level it up, and as you later on, we can combine the same type of pals into one pal, making them uh, like it's a multiplier, it's a damage multiplier. Oh, and the Celeray, it's your glider. So there you go, you use the Celeray to glide around. It's much better than any glider you can craft in the entire game. Though we will replace this at level 23, I'll talk about replacements later. So on screen right now is a website that is a decent map. There's a lot of little maps for Power World, but this is the one that I recommend and use. And I'm not sponsored, I'm not paid by these guys that own this site. I'm not affiliated with them in any way. But what I want you to do is hunt Life Monk effigies. Look all over the map for them if you want, or just use this website to find them instantly. And you want to level your capturing up to at least level three, but now that you can fly and glide and shoot, you can get you can get as high level as you want. Also, as you explore around, use your flying mount to just snipe and kill everything. So again, you can just uh, just start shooting everything, kill it. That's just free XP. It's free materials that you can swoop by and grab. Now this flying mount isn't very fast. We're gonna get a much faster one later, and a, and a third upgrade even after that. But Again, I'm just using this to mainly fly and, you know, do some vertical traveling so that I can pick up all the Life Monk effigies, which there should be one up here somewhere, according to the map. And because you can fly, you can now skim across the water without draining stamina, so you can no longer drown. This opens up the whole map for you if you want. Now, another tip for hunting these effigies, if, if you don't want to use the map, or even if you are using the map, if you do it at nighttime, they're way easier to see. Like, there's one right below me. I can see the green glow. But at nighttime, you can spot these from maximum render distance. You can see these things from so, so far away, making them very easy to collect. Also, for some reason, I'm not able to grab this, even though... There, there we go. <laughs> but yeah, hunt these at night if you want. As you can see, it is now dusk, and I could see I could see one in the distance there. There's a little green dot, and then there's a little green dot. So again, these things get real easy to see in the nighttime. Now that it's full blown nighttime, you can see there's one there in the distance. There's one there in the distance. There's one over there. Yeah, again, these things get real easy to find at night. So in just one night cycle, I managed to get 19 of these suckers. So I'm at level one. That's level two. It's gonna cost four. Level three costs seven. At level three, you're good for a while. But you can push level 4, but level 3 is more than enough for the next steps. Okay, I couldn't help it. 3 was so close, so I went out and got 3 more, and now I'm level 4. But you can do this at level 3, it's totally fine. The next thing you're going to do for quite a while is farm Alpha Pals. Now, I use this map on screen. You can also just type Pal World Interactive Map, or uh, what did I type into Google? I typed in Pal World Map, and it's usually the first result. That's the easy way to get to it. And you're going to be looking for Alpha Pals. And what is an Alpha Pal? So when I open the map here, you'll see that this Chillet, this level 11 Chillet, has a circle around it. That's an Alpha Pal. Also, this Mamorest is level 38. Because I'm only level 19, it's going to be kind of a hard fight to uh, fight this Mamorest. We could do it, but it's a real struggle. There's also level 23 King Paka. Um, and uh, again, just use the map. And, and here up here is a level 15 Pen King. I suggest capturing these, so I'm going to fast travel now uh, next to the chillet here, and uh, that's not how we fast travel. We gotta fast travel from the pal box. 
by hitting fast travel, of course. And then I'm going to fast travel, and I'm just going to defeat the chillet. I'm going to capture it. And again, you want to capture 10 of everything because that will continue your leveling journey. I've just got done crafting 75 mega spheres. These take an ingot each, which does take time. But, uh, you know, this is what you're going to have to do for a little while for upgrades. But also do remember, you still need to capture 10 of everything and use your mounts. That's what they're there for. You have an entire arsenal with you now to help you travel around and do pretty much everything you could ever want to do. And uh, is that going to kill it if I shoot it in the wing? No, it won't. There we go. So again, just, just start capturing everything. <laughs> 10 of everything. That's how we level up fast. That's what we do. By the way, at level 20, you should, from level 10 to 20, put everything into stamina. This should be 200. I actually made a mistake and put it into weight. Oops, my bad. But uh, yeah, this should be 200 at level 20. Now, your next focus from level 20 to 40 is going to be into health. The rest of this video, you are pumping your health and nothing else. Now, every single day, these bosses reset. They're not a one-time farm. So once that check mark... Uh, this check mark never technically disappears, uh, so just check back later in the day. Like, uh, let the night cycle go, and then when it's daytime again, come back, farm it again. Now, I want to talk about the Life Monk's ability real quick, because uh, it's important that you know this. So whenever you cast Recoil, it'll step on your head, and anytime you swing a weapon, you'll start shooting. But when you use a melee weapon, it shoots a whole bunch of shots. If you use a handgun or a bow, which I have no more ammo for, you can do one shot at a time. Allowing you to weaken enemies just as much as you want. There we go, so we can get them nice and low. And uh, this is just a superior way of uh, getting the enemies as low as we need them to. So, and uh, <laughs> you gotta make sure to unsummon the, the life monk or put it on passive mode before it kills your target when it hops off your head. Also, if you haven't realized it yet, because your base is level 10, you can now craft a secondary pal box if you wanted to. So, for instance, right up here near this chillet, there's a big mining section, and I could pop down a PAL box to use as a fast travel if I just want to go home without having to manually travel to any of these fast travel points. Or I could put, like, say, the box down here, mine all of this iron, fast travel back to my main base, and then disassemble the PAL box for easy transport. There's The possibilities are endless. Right now, I don't like to set up a second base. I like to keep it just as a fast travel option. Now, if there's no other players around and you have a really bad encounter like these Totoko implode units, these things can really blow up your base bad, but uh, I have a life monk, and so I can just shoot them. It's not a big deal. Like, I can just pop them. Right, there we go. So that's one down. But uh, these things can really wreck your base, so what you can do instead is just log off. Just log off, and the raid will be cancelled. And you'll get a different raid, preferably one more profitable than the Totoko, however you say their name, Totoko uh, implosion. Because these guys just, they just run in your base and blow up stuff, and it's re a real pain in the butt uh, until you have base defenses set up. But um, also, whenever you're using the Life Monk for his, um, his submachine gun, uh, you want to empty the bullets out so that he can start the recharge. Otherwise, I don't know if they'll ever fix it, but sometimes if you don't use it, all the bullets that he has, and it doesn't consume any ammo, technically. Uh, it'll just be at a low charge forever, so you definitely want him at full charges whenever possible. Also, if you do set up a second base, you can get raided from time to time, but uh, my one life monk here can just take on all the thugs, no problem. I'm just here to mine, so I'm just gonna get back to work, and the life monk will just kill all the thugs, no problem whatsoever. Oh, I also crafted a metal pickaxe just because it's way more handy. But, um, yeah, we, we can just, uh, you know, I can just team up with them and shoot these guys. Like, yeah, <laughs> they just can't stand a chance. This is why we have a life monk. It's the most powerful early game pal. Like, bar none. Also, there's a couple things stuck back there. and They, they don't seem to want to approach. <laughs> so we'll just snipe them with a submachine gun. I literally don't know how that works, but uh, we managed to do it. So, there you go. Also, reminder, check on your pals from time to time. This Petalia fell off a cliff and couldn't get back up, so she's at the bottom of the ocean starving and going insane. So we're just going to put her in the party real quick and uh, give her a bunch of berries. The berries pretty much cure everything. You, you want to make sure that uh, you keep your pals sane because uh, they'll start getting, like, mental disorders if you don't. So I'm just going to sit here and pump a bunch of berries into this Petalia 
so that they can get back to work and so they don't suffer any abnormalities. There we go. Also, at some point, this Tombat got sick, I guess because it works overnight. Any any kind of dark pal is going to work overnight, and they tend to get sick. But So what we have is just from random drops from mobs, we have low-grade medical supplies, and you have a medicine cabinet that you can craft these anyway. So we're just going to use this on the Tombat, and there we go. Now it's all better. Now, it's not very sane, so again, just pump it full of berries until it's more sane. There we go. 75 is good enough. It doesn't have to be, like, fully mentally sound, you know, to do its job. Back in, back to work. <laughs> and there it goes. Now, some of the Alpha Pals will not spawn for a full hour. Any, any of them that have a dungeon you have to enter requires one full hour of real lifetime until they come back. You hear that shimmering sound? That's the sound of a shiny. I don't know exactly what they're called, but uh, you should definitely seek these out and capture these because... They do give you the Ancient Civilization parts, so even if you don't need a chickpea, or whatever it is that may be shiny, you should always capture it anyway, or at least kill it so you can get the parts. There's no reason not to, and uh, you might be able to just do something special with them later on. So, again, this one has lightning magic, that's interesting. But uh, yeah, there we go, and you'll notice that it has uh, better than normal drops and boss music, so there we go, we got two Ancient Civilization parts from that one. Once you have the bosses on farm status, that is the Alpha Pals, you're going to research Egg Incubator, the Pal Essence Condenser, and on the level 16 line, you'll get a Mega Shield. So let me show you uh, what I'm talking about here, is once you have these bosses on farm status, on the right side, you can now use the Ancient Technology Points. So there's Egg Incubator all the way on the right side here, level 7. Scrolling down, we're then going to get Pal Essence Condenser. There we go. And then, of course, like I just said, we're going to, on the level 16 line, get Mega Shield. Now, you'll notice I'm level 31, uh, and uh, all I've done is go around to each of these zones and capture as much stuff as I can. And here's what I mean by farm status. We're going to start on the right side of the map here, and at the Marsh Island Church Ruins uh, fast travel point, or the Marsh Island, which is what you should have, you travel north, northwest a bit. There's a level 17 Grin Tail, easy to beat, from here... Or from Marsh Island, you go west, and you'll go to the level 23 Catrice. You already know where the Chillette is. It's super close nearby, but northwest of Chillette is the level 15 Pen King. And of course, from the starter zone here at Plateau Beginnings, if you just travel west and a little bit north across a bridge here, you'll come across the level 23 King Paca. All right. Then if you go northwest from there, you'll come across an Azarobe level 17, and then southwest from Azarobe is a level 23 Bushi, and this thing is important. You want to farm this every hour that you can because it's good for kindling, but we need to butcher one for a level 4 crossbow, which is going to replace our handgun. And then uh, all, down, all the way down here at Seabreeze Archipelago Castaway Beach. If you're to curve all the way around it, and then go up north, you'll have a level 3 Bronze Cherry, and then north of that is a level 11 Sweepa. Now, of course, if you just go from Seabreeze, Archipelago, Castaway Beach North, you'll hit a level 11 gum Gumos. And that's mostly it. So, but if you go really further north, uh, now, this is a level 31 Relaxosaurus Lux. You don't want to fight this. Very difficult fight, so... But you do want to get this uh, fast travel point here called Sacred Realm of the Thunder Dragon. This is, again, northwest of Bushi, so just go up there. This is a really good place to farm Relaxosauruses for the high-quality oil which you could also buy using our method that we showed at the start of this video. And then northwest of here is very important, the Beacon, or Beacon, 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 I don't know how to say its name, but um, this is going to be your third flying mount later on. So you just want to get the waypoint for Deep Bamboo Thicket. North of all of this stuff, which uh, this is a fast travel point you already have, is Icewind Island. You go southeast, you get the level 14 Doomond, and then southeast is the level 18 Nightwing. And then uh, you can also go from Forgotten Island East, or you can just go from Icewind Island Southwest. And there's a level 23 Felbat. And that's basically all of the stuff you can farm right now. Another important waypoint to get is northeast of the Pen King is uh, called Goblin's Tur Gobfin's Turf, not Goblin. And this is where we'll farm some Pal uh, Liquids. I forget what it's like, Pal Liquids or something. I forget the exact name right now, but you can't buy them in the store. You have to farm them, and that is the best farming place in the game. What are they called again? They're called Pal Fluids, not Liquids. It's the same thing. Come on now. 
And uh, they're level 20 though, so you, you want to come here with a fire-based pal to clean that out. And there we go. So once you have your bosses on farm status and you're crafting, by the way, you want to start crafting Giga Spears whenever you can. As soon as you hit level tw level 20, you want to come down here as soon as you hit level 20 and learn Giga Sphere and never, ever, ever craft a Mega Sphere ever again. You're only going to be crafting Giga Spheres from now on. And if you're wondering how do you get so many ingots, well, you have one ingot right here in the base, one little ingot node, and then right across the street from your base. You have another one right there, so that's two. And then just down the road here on the right, you know, there's uh, there's number three. And then down the road on the left is number four. And then like I showed you earlier, uh, I'll show you again so that you know where to get iron ingots. It's very important to get lots and lots of ingots. That is the biggest thing ever. And that is right here where the chillet is, northwest of the chillet. Uh, this is where I put my second base. This is a temporary base. Which you could put down two bases now, and then you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six or seven, possibly eight, I can't count, uh, more iron nodes. You can just mine here and then fast travel back to your main base and store them. And then you can have, you know, if you followed my guide at the start, if it's not patched, you'll have a level three kindling that does the work, which is this, uh, what was it, Reptiro? And if you don't have that, well, then you have Bushi, which is a level two kindling, so... He's good enough. He's over here cooking the berries. He had to take a, he had to take a little lunch break though. It looks like, and uh, <laughs> remember, you only want to feed them baked berries and nothing else so that they can keep their sanity up. And you want to check on them every once in a while to make sure some of them didn't get, didn't get stuck somewhere or fall off a cliff, because they will starve and go insane if you don't, you know, help them out. Uh, there's a sprain right now on one of my pals, but I don't really care about the tom, the tom bat. You know, I'm gonna replace him as soon as I can. This is my current working party. I've got Warsect, Lunaris, Petalia, Reptiro, Pen King, Tombat, Eek the Deer. This is just an add-on. Uh, Azerobe, Catris, and Bushi. And I'm gonna I'm gonna go over more of this later in the video on how to fill this out and what you should fill this out with. Now let's talk about the egg incubator. You definitely want to place this. You want to place more than one. You want to place one near your fireplace, so as close as you can to the fireplace. And the other one you want to place, preferably, near the cooler. But uh, you don't have to place a second one right now if you don't want to. But just have at least one down. And you've probably looted some eggs by now. You just put them in the incubator and just come back, collect them later. It's just free pals, free experience points. It's uh, pretty simple. Next up is the pal essence condenser. And all of those life monks that you've been catching, we're going to be condensing them down pretty shortly here. I like to just kind of put this over here near the, near the statue, and uh, there we go. It is a tall one, and this thing used to take forever to build. Well, it still take it takes it takes three minutes without any assistance. So yeah, even with a level three handiwork pal, it's gonna take 50 whole seconds. I'll see when it's done. Now let's talk about essence condensing real quick. And life monk is the first one we're going to do. Now I've had this life monk in my party the whole playthrough so far. I'm gonna just sort real quick, and uh, the thing is, we want the best life monk with the best passive skills. So this one has serious, which is just work speed. We don't care about work speed. So we're gonna look at all the life monks. This one has ferocious. That's attack plus 20. So this one is the breadwinner right now. We're gonna put this one in our party. It's only level three, but we can level it up super duper quick. Uh, and let's look at the other ones. We have Vanguard, which is 10% increased to player attack. That's nice. That's another good one. And uh, what do we have here? Another van. There's a vanguard. Also nimble. What is nimble? We have 10% movement speed, which is nice. So that's actually possibly better uh, because, well, we're mostly going to be using it for player attack. So I'm going to go ahead and put that there. But ferocious is real nice for that attack plus 20. All right. Then we're still looking workaholic. This is just sanity drops slower. Diet lover. They don't eat as much. Uh, burly body, defense plus 20, we don't care about defense. Runner, we got 20% movement speed, that's only to the pal, not to us. So right now the winner is Vanguard. Vanguard gives us attack, that's when it's on our head, we are attacking using its submachine gun. And so now we're going to condense all of the life monks into this one. And to do that, we're going to run over to the pal condenser, and we're just going to smash them in. <laughs> so here we go. This is going, we're going to put the one that we're going to buff up, so we're going to click that one. 
And then we need to select four more to use. So here we go, just one, two, three, four. And then con begin condensing. There we go, the condensing is complete. So now we got uh, one star on our life monk here. And now we have to condense 16. Do we have, I have 13. So I need to catch three more for the next star level. And that's fine, we'll, ca we'll catch them as we, you know, travel around the world. Now, before we move on, there's a few defensive items I want you to make. I want you to make the feathered hairband, and I want you to make the mega shield. And this is going to give you some extra defense. So here's what those two do. The mega shield is going to give us 260 shield, whereas we only had 100 before. And the headband, which is already equipped, gives us 15 defense and 60 additional health. It's not much, but it's, it's something. Also, it's time to just craft a normal parachute. Now, what happens with this is that um, if you if you if your pal that you use as a glider is dead, it will then switch to your parachute. But because our pal is alive, we will default to the pal instead, which is just better. And we will be replacing Cell RA pretty soon with a better one. But another thing that you can do is you can take your Cell Arrays and then condense them down. So we're going to go ahead and put this one into the condenser and then take our other cell arrays and there we go now this what this does is increase your glide distance and less stamina usage so it's pretty damn nice and the upgrade that we're going to swap to which is a faster version well, barely will carry us slightly forward from the upgraded cell array so again it's just a, a quality improvement Next up, you're going to learn Tropical Outfit and Tundra Outfit, and you're going to craft both of these. There we go. So, Tundra and Tropical at level 9. Then go to the crafting bench and make both of those. So, we're going to go ahead and start production there. And we have our crafting pal ready to go. So, Tropical Outfit is made, and then make Tundra Outfit. Go ahead and make that. And you're going to keep both of these in your inventory, and you're just going to swap them. If your character gets hot, you put on the tropical. If your character gets cold, you put on the tundra, which we're going to need because we're going to go get a dig toys. Our mission is to get a dig toys. So you're going to fast travel to Ice Wind Island, and then you're going to go southeast into the desert area, which is down over here. You can see that there's a little bit of desert area, so I'm going to just ride there on my elk, the deer, real quick. Now that I'm here, there should be dig toys in this area right now. There is a Doomond. And uh, if you don't see any dig toys immediately nearby, you can fast travel away, fast travel back. You can also, if you're the only player in the area, we can just log in and log out, which is what I'm going to do because it's a lot easier and faster. Now, this is the dig toys. And I haven't taught you this yet, but Nightwing is really good at farming basically anything. And here's how you want to set up your Nightwing. You want him to have Air Cannon and Wind Cutter, and here's why. These things are instant attacks, very fast cast. You can technically walk away and uh, shoot while you kite. And this also pierces through enemies so you can hit multiple targets in a line. And this is just the easiest way to weaken anything currently in the game. And then it's just an easy capture after that. It's just so simple and so easy. And you can just fly around and do this to everything you encounter. And you don't have to stop at one dig toys. You can run around and capture 10 or 5 or however many that you want. There's hangi use, there's uh, toto tokos, there's, you know, there's just tons of stuff here. And, uh, yeah, so these darn, these arm creatures, I can't, I can't land a hit on them. <laughs> Alright, it's pretty weak. I don't want to... Wound them too much more, but uh, yeah, let's get them. There's some sparkets there. Let's go ahead and grab those. See how easy it is to hit all these. They're already like majorly wounded. Uh, one of them died, <laughs> but we can throw a ball from safe distance to capture them. There's another dig toys. So let's get them. And again, these have very long ranged attacks. We can aggro enemies. It's just the easiest thing. And you know, if things get hairy, we can just fly upwards. It's not like we're in any kind of danger. And oh, I missed. Okay, let's try again. There we go. We got them this time. So. Again, just run around, capture a whole bunch of dig toys, and uh, uh, we're going to do the same thing, too. We can combine four of them and level it up so that it mines even faster than normal. There we go, that one's weak. And again, yeah, just you just fly around the island here. And uh, for whatever reason, I'm not, I'm not suffering from heat uh, problems, so I don't know if they nerfed this area. But um, when I used to come here, you would need the tropical outfit because your character would burn up. So I'm not sure what's going on at the moment. I don't know why. I don't know if it's a bug or if they just made this area less dangerous to be at. 
or, or what's going on. Okay, so here it is. It says hot, so we just swap on the outfit. And again, when, when, whenever we get cold, uh, we simply switch to the tundra outfit. And you could, you could just, you could just discard your, your cloth outfit. You don't need it anymore at this point. You'll have to put it on at night, because at night it does get cold. I don't know how that works. I guess deserts. Well, yeah, deserts do get pretty darn cold, I guess, in the real world, so that does make sense. Anyway, getting more dig toys here, and uh, Doomans, and you can kill Syndicate. You can kill the Syndicate thugs. They have, they're humans, they're easy to kill. They give good XP, and you'll notice that um, that Life Monk that we had in our party, it's already level 17, just from cap and stuff, just uh, going around. Also, Toko Tokos, they have gunpowder. They drop gunpowder because they are an explosive bird. They're basically a, a creeper from Minecraft, I guess. Kinda, that's their special attack. They're the, what is it, uh, Electrodes <laughs> from, you know, that, that one game <laughs> that started all this monster catching stuff. So yeah, I'm just running around, I'm just capping all the things. And uh, again, this is how we level up fast. There we go. Get these Doomans here in the back. And you can see I'm already level 32. Go ahead and throw the ball. Pretty simple stuff. <laughs> Looks like we got another... Uh, you, you can see I'm cleaving things in the back here, and I just ended up killing it instead, but that's fine. This is incredibly easy and fast to level up. This Again, this that's why this is the best start for new players guide. That's why you're watching. Alright. <laughs> what do we have here? Fuddler, yeah, get him too. Just get everything. And while <laughs> while you're in every new little zone and you see new, new pals, grab all of them. <laughs> Alright, let's get back to base. Once you've secured your dig toys, you're going to open the technology menu here. Go down to level 19 and you'll have the dig toys headband. You're going to uh, research that and I need some paldium fragments, which I should have some ready here at the machine. And uh, I always have this thing cranking. So there we go. Get that moving and grooving. And then we're going to come over here and we're going to craft the headband, which uh, takes a little while. But, uh, you know, we have our level 3 helper, and it looks like uh, Bushi was wanting to do it, but now he's mining trees with his samurai sword. Alright, see you in a sec while we craft this. So now we're going to get our dig toys. I'm going to put one of our little life monks here away. I'm going to put him on the very last tab so I can find him later easier. And let's go to our dig toys, wherever those are. There it is. And looking through the perks, uh, this one has Stronghold Strategist, so we'll just go ahead and pick that one. And we're going to basically combine the four others into that one so that it mines slightly faster. It doesn't really mine that much faster, but, you know, faster is better. And it's not like we need five dig toys anyway. So put that one in, and then we're going to combine the other four as a sacrifice, as a ritual. I only... I thought I had more. Um, well, I thought I had five, but I only had... Oh, well. I did. We'll just use the level one dig toys. It's totally fine. And so, all we gotta do now is, uh, let's see, let's find something to mine here. Here we go, there's some iron. So, if you just put it on the iron, it'll spin. But if you hold F, it'll spin even better. And that really mines it fast. Look at that. It just grinds it into dust. Yep. It's that easy. Alright, and then we're gonna cancel. <laughs> and then pick up all that ore. And then just rinse and repeat. And uh, he'll go over there and start mining. He's a really good miner, so you can put him in your camp anyway, which is probably what I'll end up doing. But, you know, I like to take him over here to the actual iron camp. And, uh, <laughs> yep, put him to work. That's right. Get to work. And then we can do drill crusher. There we go. So while he's doing that, I can work on this. And you can see, uh, even with my metal pickaxe, I am no match for his speed. It is way superior and faster to have both of us working at the same time. And even when he runs out of his drill crusher special there, you see now he's out of juice. Just throw him at another pile. He'll keep spinning, it won't be as fast, but it's still pretty good. It's about half as much damage, but uh, he flattened, like he's already flattened one. I'm over here, about to crush this one. So he's about twice as fast as me at the moment, but I'm gonna go ahead and pick up the stuff here. And yes, I am now overweight, which sucks, and uh, I wish I had a grapple gun. But hey, we can always make a grapple gun, it's no problem. Now, since you're this far into the video, I just want to show you a really cheap trick that you can do. 
So, for instance, this uh, this life monk here, we're going to use his special ability to just, you know, shoot his uh, submachine gun. There we go. And we're just going to waste all the bullets. And now it's on a long cooldown. But if you just log out of the game and log back in, it restores the cooldown. This works in multiplayer. Uh, yes, yes, it works in multiplayer. <laughs> this will probably get patched at some point. Maybe. We'll see what happens. But in the meantime, you can just log off, log back on. You get your cooldowns back. And, uh, <laughs> um, all right, and then let's pop, uh, the life monk back, there you go, full cooldowns, and you can use this with your dig toys to mine stuff, you can, there, there's so many things you can do, also, I guess I left some ore behind here, we'll go ahead and pick that up, and, uh, get back to it. At level 21, you're going to upgrade your flying mount. Now, of course, I'm level 32 and I haven't done this yet, so it's okay if you've overleveled. But Nightwing has served us well, but this is the slowest flying mount in the game. A lot of new players will just use this forever, and it's so slow. So we're going to get a replacement called Van Worm, and Van Worm is pretty easy to find. I'll show you here on the PAL deck. So here's how to use the Habitat Finder. If you've ever caught one or seen one, it'll show up here. You click Habitat, and this is how it works. You're going to see these orange circles where it could spawn in at. But what you really want to look at are the orange circles that are heavily overlapping. So, for instance, this circle is kind of faded here, right? But all of these circles converge in the middle right here where the orange is the thickest. Well, where I'm at, the orange is a big, thick orange line, like kind of like an L shape right here. This means this is the best habitat for Van Worm, and that would be none or other than the sealed Realm of the Swordmaster Waypoint right above the Bushi fight. So you just kind of run between here and the Ravine Entrance Waypoints. You just kind of run up and down this road, kind of looking up in the sky, and you'll, you'll find some Van Worms. So you want to capture a bunch of them and then combine them in the PAL condenser so you fly faster. Now remember, you want to fight Bushi every time he's up, so I'm using a water-based pal because he's a fire-based pal, and uh, our Celeray will just kick his butt. So, you know, there you go. Go get him, Celeray. And uh, you don't want to kill him. Make sure you capture him because we need to butcher one for a plus four crossbow, but he's also a level three lumberjack somehow. I don't really understand how. You can just hide behind the pillar here, and he can't really do much. Um, <laughs> he'll just keep jumping around. Uh, so again, you could just straight run from him. He's not really the biggest threat. You can just, you know, dodge roll his attacks and whatnot. It's a very easy and simple fight. And look at that. After I left the fight, there's a couple of van worms here. So we'll just hop on and uh, just take them down real quick using our Nightwing. Why not? Because it's really easy to farm just about everything with Nightwing, especially early on. There we go. Capture that one. And yeah, these aren't that high level. They're not level 20 plus, but we don't need them to be high level. They're just merely faster. Also, this Bond Cherry wants to fight, so we'll go ahead and grab them as well. Again, we capture 10 of everything. This is how you power level. This is how you level up quickly. And the faster you level... Oh, what is this one? I must have hit... Oh, there's like two more entering the fight. So, we, we got three mobs on us now. But hey, we have that Mega Shield. We have armor. We, we're pretty high leveled. This is uh, something we can totally handle. There we go. Oh, I missed. Get that one in there. Now, the one problem I want to say with air cannon is that it auto-aims. Also, this one did not get captured. Sitting there sniffing my farts. <laughs> Just running at me. It's like, what the heck? Alright, there we go. And, uh, all in a day's work. I just want to show you my stats. Remember, so, we're not supposed to have 10 levels in weight. Uh, we're supposed to have 10 levels in stamina. There we go. And then the rest would go into HP. So, I should have 1800 HP, and not 1700. So, you want to check all your Van Worms and see if there's any good stats. This one has Ferocious. There is a mod that lets you move faster. I forget what it's called, but oh, looks like I'm getting invaded by the free Pal Alliance ha Hardliners here. So, uh, again, we have our uh, Life Monk, and uh, we have our... Uh, just submachine gun him down. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> this is just, uh, you know, it's kind of rem reminiscent of uh, Modern Warfare's No Russian moment, huh? Go get him, Life Monk. <laughs> okay, so he's not doing nothing. Try again. Fight him. Get him. Kill him. Brutalize him. Look at that. <laughs> oh, they're so dead. And again, we're taking our Van Worm and we're combining the four lesser ones to improve its, uh, its flight abilities. There we go. 
And don't forget, you have to learn how to ride it, so at level 21, you're gonna learn the Van Worm Saddle and then craft one. Don't forget to craft it. So that means you go over here to the PAL workbench, that's like the purple one. And here's the Van Worm Saddle, and these things take a while to craft, so... Uh, you know, just put a- put, just put one of your level 3 handiworks on it, and uh, it'll be done in a jiffy. So, this flying mob works a little bit different. It has a jump, and you have to double jump to activate flight. It's a- it's a little different, you'll get used to it, uh, than the Nightwing, but, uh... Again, it- it has air cannon, which we know and love, it has Spitfire, which doesn't have as much range. It has Ignis Blast, which doesn't have as much range either. But, uh, you'll mostly use air cannon for longer range attacks. Like, if we want to hit this Kativa, then that's gonna be an air blast. But if we want to hit something closer, oh, we have the Ignis Blast, you know, which is you're just breathing fire on these poor creatures, right? And, uh, down they go. And then you have Spitfire, Spirit Fire, which, um, doesn't seem to be casting for some reason. I'm not sure. There it goes. Okay. And, uh, wow, that just sent that thing flying. That's a bug. Now it's time to upgrade your glider, which is currently Celeray, and you're going to be getting Gale Claw instead. So here's where you can find Gale Claws. Now I actually prefer this area because it's just closer to the fast travel up here. It's easier to get to, and uh, there's more fast travel points around here. Now this is obviously there's more spawns of Gale Claws, but um... And they usually find a couple spawned every, like, once in a while. But, um, again, this is generally where I go, is right in here to farm them. So, go ahead and get you some. Now, I'm gonna be real, and I don't- I can't honestly answer if a perk like Runner with 20% increased movement speed, if this works with gliding. I have no idea if this works or not, but... Just to be safe, I would choose something like that. Oh, this one has Swift. 30% increased movement speed and mind, mind Foreman and Workaholic. This one's pretty cool. Uh, so, uh, this increases your mining efficiency too. Like, that that just helps if you use a mining axe, right? So, uh, clearly that one's the winner. That one's the alpha <laughs> of, uh, of Gale Claws in my party here. So, I'm definitely gonna put that one, replace the Celeray. The Celeray is now retired. And, uh, we're gonna pump this Gale Claw up by combining all the other ones that I got, as you should. And then you have to, of course, upgrade, uh, or research the, uh, the gloves, which is level 23. So there you go. And here is why we wanted Gale Claw. Watch, look at this speed. It's crazy. And the cool thing about Gale Claw is you can aim your gun while you glide. And it takes less stamina. This thing is just fast. It's faster than running. It's almost faster than your ground mount. So here's running, here's sprinting, and then here's gliding. It's so much faster. And you can kind of bunny hop too, sort of kind of with it. Like you can just kind of keep the momentum going too. It's, it's a learning curve, but whenever you have the grapple hook, you can go even faster. You grapple up a tree, and using that momentum, you then glide forward, and you just fly. It's so nice. Oh, and by the way, Gale Claw is the best gliding mount in the whole game, so you won't ever replace it ever again, so feel free to pump the hell out of its power. And uh, you can always also use it for combat if you want. I mean, this one is particularly very fast. It seems to be having trouble targeting things, though. Still him to attack aggressively and try again. That way we can watch him kill the pingulate, so he's flying up high. Where's he going? He's just leaving. <laughs> okay, whatever. Here, let's shoot- let's shoot a Nightwing here, and, uh, go get him, Gale Claw. Let's see you- bird versus bird. Let's go. Okay, he's not doing so good. <laughs> he's got the air cannon, though, at least. He's doing something. Come on, you got this. Oh, he's- it's only a level 13 Gale Claw. I kind of forgot. He's- he's not very powerful yet. He's not in his 30s. So there we go. That's Gale Claw, everybody. <laughs> Now it's time to work on your AOE clear, and this thing breaks the game. This is Mossanda. Mossanda is one of the best AOE early game clears. Later, uh, I believe the Rexosaurus or Relaxosaurus is better, but that's in the late 40s. Right now, we're going to go north. Here's our base. We're going to go all the way north. This is the Catrus Island with the Island Hopper Coast. You're going to fast travel here, and we're going to go north to this little part of the island. So. Uh, let me actually get to something that'll let me fast travel, so we're gonna go here. And then we're just going to fly across the water there real quick on our Van Worm, which, uh, again, going north. So, summon your Van Worm. 
and I should eat real quick. There we go. Feed everybody, make sure everybody's fed. And uh, we're just gonna go north. I'll, I'll meet you there. So here is Mossanda. Now this one's sleeping because, uh, well, it's about to be, you know, awake because it's morning. But they're big green panda looking thing. So uh, again, they are leaf based. So you can just use your fire abilities here and take it down. Now, unfortunately, my uh, van worm is not leveled. So I would like to swap mounts or swap anything to something a little stronger here and have it fight the Mossanda. Now, for now, I would say just get one of these. Also, he's attacking me. And they do hurt. They're very powerful and dangerous. But uh, you definitely want to level, you know, get 112 of these and pump them up all the way. Uh, is, that, is that enough to catch? I don't know. I think we should wound it a bit more. He's kind of up on the mountain being weird. <laughs> now, these things float when they jump. It's kind of interesting. But, uh, yeah, we'll try to capture it. And uh, get one of these, and we're going to get its grenade launchers. Now, this requires level 24, but you're going to learn Masanda's Grenade Launcher. And this, so far, out of everything you've ever crafted in the entire game, this will take the longest to craft. And I need more fragments. But I'm pretty sure I have fragments ready over here. And uh, you can see now that we have Gale Claw, and I didn't want to climb the tree. Everything is really quick. Movement is super quick now, so we can just... Glide around the camp, and no, I don't want to climb the trees, damn it. Alright, get to crafting. Masanda's Grenade Launcher. This is an epic quality item, and it takes those high quality PAL oils, which uh, we did get by, you know, farming the dig toises earlier. Or, my favorite place, again, I've talked about this earlier in the video, is right here at the Sacred Realm of Thunder Dragon. You fast travel here, there's Relaxosauruses, you kill those, you get the oils. You can also just buy them from the Fisherman's Outpost all the way over here at the fisherman's point so again that's just the best ways to do it so let's get to crafting and look how long this takes with me and a level three handiwork this thing is going to take a very long time to finish so have fun with that and this is what your current party should look like you should have a life monk for single target a gale claw for gliding a mustanda for aoe damage Bandworm for flying, and Ekthadir for land travel. So, Mossanda with the grenade launcher. Just look at this. Dis this is just disgusting. You ride on its back. It's a f it, it has a floaty jump. I don't understand why, but it really helps whenever you're uh, grenade launching. So, look at this. Goodbye, Lamball. Goodbye, Pingulet. Goodbye, Kativas. You just you nuke everything, and we have so much. Like, we can just kill everything now. If there, if PvP ever happens on this game, like, and you rush this, you just win the server. You can kill everyone's base, you can kill every player, and uh, there's nothing they can do. You can just nuke everything, okay? You have, like, I can keep firing for a while here. There's so many more shots. And the greatest thing about Masanda is that when you shoot a large enemy or a boss, it stuns it and knocks it over. So you can shoot one... And then hit it with an ability, like, you know, stone cannon or something. And then you can shoot it again, use an ability, and you you basically can just hold something hostage for the entire time that you have ammo. Now, Mosanda, you want to burn through all of its ammo, otherwise it will never recharge. So you want to make sure you fire every shot you get when you activate it. And, uh, yeah, this thing is awesome. This thing, it's so weird that it, like, floats when it jumps, but, um... Th this is insanely powerful. You want to farm a ton of these and then condense them down in the PAL condenser. I gotta do some leveling, and Mosanda's really great for leveling. You just travel, you fast travel to any of these zones where there's a bunch of humanoids. Uh, especially the area we were just at up here, there's a bunch of level 26 humanoids patrolling. You just nuke them down with Mosanda, and then everything else in, in your current party here will just level like crazy. So th this level 15 Gale Claw... It'll be level 25 in no time by just nuking down everybody with this Mosanda. Now, from now on, everything in your party, you want to level up. Now, we're going to be replacing Van Worm pretty soon around level 29, level 30-ish, which we technically, we've been for a little while now. So we're going to replace Van Worm a little bit later. But right now, let's level up our Ekthadir. It's level 29. Let's get it another star. We have some extra Ekthadir so we can feed into it. And there we go. That makes our Ekthadir that much stronger. Now that you have Mosandra or Mos Mosanda, you can go ahead and take on the Tower of Rain Syndicate boss if you want. It's more than easy enough. 
Now it's time to upgrade the base pals. Now you can kind of somewhat skip this if you um, did the level 4 gun method at the start of this video. Uh, but if it's patched, you'll have to do this. So you're going to fast travel to the Sea Breeze Archipelago Castaway Beach. And you're going to be flying east into a sanctuary zone, which you're not technically supposed to go to because the humans there that run the place aren't really big fans. Uh, but this little area in the mist, you're going to fly over here and there is a lot of things to catch. Here's what you'll want to be catching over here. You want three Pen Kings, three Valets, one Petalia, and three Grizzbolts. There's other stuff here you can catch too, like there is the Aethadir. Um, I forget what it's called, but it's the Lightning version, if you want one of those. I mean, technically you should catch capture 10 of everything, but you might already have some Pen Kings if you've been fighting the boss up here and capturing that one. And, uh, yeah, there you go. So, go, go up there and go capture some. Now, once you've cleared the island here, and this is what it looks like on the map, just log out and log back in. If there's no other players around, then it'll refresh all the mobs. And just continue to farm until you have at least three Pen Kings, three Valets, one Petalia, and three Grizzbolts. The Grizzbolts are for electricity much later on. You won't be using them for quite a while. Now, if you're having trouble finding Grizzbolts, this is the spot that I like to camp. I like to just sit on this pillar and then log out and back in multiple times, and eventually one will spawn somewhere within eyesight range. You just have to keep at it. If you're really impatient, you can always come back later because we won't need electricity for a while. So just remember this spot and then come back here and get some Grizzbolts when you need electricity. When you are level 34, you're going to be replacing Van Worm with Beacon. And to get that, you're going to go right here to this alpha boss. Now, if you travel from the Forgotten Island fast travel point that you got at the start of the game, you just go southeast along the coast, and you'll find it right here. It's a, not the diffi most difficult fight, but you need to be level 34 to research the saddle. Now, if you want, you can just really lame this fight. So I am positioned right here at negative 333, negative 258. And uh, it'll just bug out and kind of glitch trying to get to me, but it can't. And I can just sit here and shoot it indefinitely. So, again, it's not the hardest fight. Like, you can just sit under it with ranged, you know, pals and DPS it down. Or you can just lame it out like this. It's ultimately your choice. And the be Beacon Saddle is level 34, so there we go. Also, another note, if you capture multiples of these, you can butcher them for a plus 4 handgun. But I just want to let you know at level 36, you get single shot rifle, which invalidates even the legendary level plus 4 handgun. So there's really no point to butcher it. So I actually died in the fight, and I had to have my Van Worm recover, so I used Nightwing to get me back out there and finish the fight. So there we go, now we have Beacon, and this thing is so much, so much faster than the other two. And it's really nice, look how fast it just moves horizontally. And uh, it doesn't have to do a little jump to take off, you just hold spacebar and you're flying. And yes, we can get airborne very quickly, it doesn't burn nearly as much stamina as Van Worm. And uh, if this thing had that 30% move speed uh, trait, it would move even faster. So you definitely want to keep farming these. And when I sprint with it, it flies super duper quickly as well. So yeah, this thing is great. It's not so good at uh, hitting distant enemies. Its attacks kind of suck. So this is purely a transport mount and not so much a combat fighting mount. At least not right now. Not until you learn some better skills. So here's a pretty interesting trick you can do. While you're flying with Beacon, you can fly up as high as you want, and once you run out of stamina... We're just gonna burn all of our stamina, you know, going as fast as we can, as high as we can. Dismount, and then when you ever use your glide, that's a whole brand new stamina bar. Now, if you expend this stamina bar, it will be glitched in a certain way where you can't exactly glide or mount anymore. So what you have to do is you have to summon Gale Claw, glide with it, and then when you summon something else, you can ride it again, or you can just log off and back on and that fixes it. But, uh, yeah. So that's how you, uh, abuse double stamina bars so you can glide around faster. So, again, it's much faster instead of flying to just dismount midair and then glide with, uh, your, uh, Gale Claw. So, there you go.
And then, of course, you know, before hitting the ground, you just glide again. And then that will, uh, you know, basically stop the momentum from falling to your death. And there you go. So that's just movement 101 for you. Now, a quick tip. Hold on, we gotta switch armor because we're cold. And um, I don't seem to have my old armor on for some reason. I know I loot. Oh, there it is. It's just broken. <laughs> so, um... Apparently when armor breaks, it's gonna just swap to the non-broken ones. Now, so, talking about boss killing and beating tower bosses. So, earlier we beat the, you know, the uh, the Tower of Rain Syndicate pretty easily. But there's an easier way to shotgun down and just delete bosses, any boss in the game. And your team would consist of the following. So, there's these creatures called Daydreams. They're these little, you know, pink floaty things that pop out at night around the, the starter zone. And they have uh, a necklace that you can craft in the technology tree, which uh, it's around here somewhere. Daydreams necklace. So whenever you attack, they will attack. So what you do is you put four of these in your party, and then you have your life monk, uh, you know, fully buffed out. And so you summon your life monk, you put it on your head, you start shooting. All four daydreams will also start shooting. And then you just delete bosses. You just delete bosses super quick. But also by then, you'll also have guns. So every time you're shooting, the daydreams are also shooting. And you just shotgun down bosses insanely super duper fast. And uh, that's basically how you speed run the game. Now, I want to talk about all of the research and technology so far. And what they do and why you would or would not want to do it. So the alarm bell, you can use this to turn off the aggression in your base if you get invaded. You always want to be aggressive, so you never want to build this. Real talk. Fire bow lets you catch things on fire. We, we have fire crossbow that we have access to at the start of the video. There's no reason to research this. The rush roar, rush roar is useless, slow, and stupid. It doesn't really mine super efficiently either. Even early game, it doesn't mine well, so just skip this. Uh, the, the fox spark, if you level one up all the way and get the right buffs, it can do okay. But it's such a short duration, there's just better options. The Melpaca sucks, there's no reason to ride one. The Bat is pointless to craft. Signs are fun for multiplayer, so you can learn this one if you want. Uh, the Jolt Hog, if you level one up enough, it, it's basically just a one-time throw lightning grenade. It's okay, it's not really that great. Poison Bow, now one meta you can do is Fire Bow and Poison Bow swaps. So you can double status abnormality an opponent to capture them easier. Uh, Daydream's Necklace, we talked about that. That's how you can speedrun bosses. So, the Dire Howl is, with, without spamming abilities, the fastest land mount. However, whenever you use the uh, Ichthadir and you use its charge ability, it's the, now the fastest mount. So, this beats the Dire Howl because you can do this ability. If you can't spam this ability, it is no longer the fastest mount. So, uh, next up is Bear Trap. I've never really seen these used too well. Wooden Gate. It's good for multiplayer. Uh, you do want to get Meat Cleaver because this is how you get the plus four recipes. And it's the only way to get the plus four recipes. Uh, you don't really need Pelt Armor. You can skip that one. You can skip Crossbow because we can just butcher our Bushi for a plus four crossbow if you want one. Metal Spear, don't need it. Training Dummy is okay if you want to test DPS. It's pretty cool. I would get this if you want to test your damage. There's no reason to ride a Grimtail. Uh, the Wall Torch for lighting is okay. I just play at higher contrast. You don't need Sweep or Univolt Saddle. If you're making a Sweep a team, then you would want this, but otherwise there's no reason to get it. Uh, the Viewing Cage, I haven't really seen the point of getting this. It just lags the game. Uh, and I have a good computer too. You can get the Heat-Resistant Pelt Armor if you want, but, uh, you know, we got other stuff instead. Metal Chest, it's okay, but it's 15 ingots. I think that's a little wasteful. Uh, you don't need the Arsonk saddle, just wear armor if you want to be warm. You can use a cooking pot to get advanced cooking recipes. You're going to eventually want to get this, but early mid-game, you don't really need it. There's just not really a point until you're really min-maxing your stats. Uh, heater, you can just uh, put one of these nearby for an egg incubator if you want to have a warm egg incubator. The pingulet does a lot of damage, but then it kills the pingulet, so it's kind of pointless. Uh, the floppy, there's no reason to have one of these. It just automatically loots stuff, I guess, if you're really lazy. You don't need the gliders because we have the better <laughs> the animal gliders. Uh, stone, if you're playing multiplayer, you want to get stone eventually. Stone is just way better, but you don't need it for quite a while. 
The cooler, you can build one of these next to an egg incubator. You don't need Totoko's gloves. Um, it's okay. It fires explosive eggs, but it's it's not better than Masanda. So Masanda is just straight up better. Uh, breeding farm, you're eventually going to get one of these whenever you start farming honey and milk and making cakes and breeding. But you don't really need to breed unless you want to really min-max. And it takes a while. Cement, you have to learn this, so go ahead and learn cement. You you have to have it for late game crafting. Uh, the toolkit, uh, if you want to speed up handiwork, you can. Uh, I don't really see the point, but uh, again, it's just a free investment. If you have a really big base, go for it. Weapon workbench, you absolutely want to get one of those. And then you don't need to ever ride a brawn cherry for any reason. Or ha hang you, you don't need to. You can fly at this point. The hang you is pointless and slow. Musket, never use the musket. Gunpowder, you definitely want to learn gunpowder. You can learn coarse ammo or you can just buy it. I've taught you how to buy it at the start of the game. You don't need to ever ride in an Ifridin, ever. Stun baton sucks, don't bother. It's also really expensive, 20 electric organs, and it sucks. It's basically a bat that can sometimes electrify things. The large bear trap, I've never seen it good. Never seen it used good. Uh, King Paka, you don't need to ride one of these. There's no reason to ride one of those. Metal armor, go ahead and learn this. Metal armor is pretty decent. Metal helmet, also just better than the helmet we have on. But uh, again, they're a little expensive early on. Later on, when you have a ton of ingots, you might as well. But right now, all of your ingots should go towards uh, gigaspheres. You can uh, upgrade the pals bed if you want, but it does cost nails. I don't really, you don't really need this because you have berries. Berries will keep them sane. You don't have to upgrade their bed. And uh, you, you don't need to increase gathering efficiency ever. This is pointless. Um, what else? Makeshift handguns. Skip this one. You can buy this from the vendor. Uh, you can get heat-resistant metal armor if you want. If you want. You, you don't have to. You, don't need to. you never need to increase efficiency of planting. There's just no reason. You don't need defensive structures. You don't need lamps. Power generator. You will eventually need a power generator, so you can go ahead and learn that. Hypersphere, absolutely get Hypersphere, though it does cost cement, which is uh, annoying to get until you buy horns. Sphere assembly line, you have to get this anyway. And uh, ceiling lamp, don't need it. Giga shield, absolutely get Giga shield. And uh, craft one is ASAP as soon as you can. Uh, production assembly line, you have to get this one. Stump and axe, you don't really need this unless you're really burning through coal. Handgun, you don't need it. Just skip handgun. Uh, you can learn the ammo, though. It's useful to learn the ammo if you want. The bed, you don't need a better bed for yourself. I, like, I, I, this whole playthrough, I did not sleep in a bed once. You definitely want a high-quality hot spring. That just really helps. Uh, grenades, I haven't really found a point for grenades. Stone gate's pretty cool. Reptiro saddle, you don't need to ride a Reptiro. I mean, you can way later on when you have one max level. Because it can mine the entire mining camp in one spell. But until then, like, you don't need it. Like, get this way later, okay? Weapon assembly line, absolutely. Uh, tomato plantation, you can get that if you want. You don't need it. You do need polymer no matter what. You need polymer. And um, you don't need snowman. You need improved furnace, absolutely. And I like, the I like upgrading the tools, so I always get those just because... And then, of course, Ultra Sphere at level 35. And you know how to level up by now. You've watched the guide. You, and you, you basically know what to get from here. You, you, you've played the game enough to understand at this point how things work and what to do to progress. I don't have to hold your hand any longer. You have a winning PAL team at the base. You have every ability to travel everywhere. You know how to upgrade and level up and empower your PALs. And yeah, there's a few things I didn't really go over that I don't need to. Like, for instance, the Pal Souls that you can go to the statue and enhance your Pals. This is for real late game min-maxing stuff. Like, if I want to, you know, add some damage to Masanda, I can put some Souls into attack. But it's such a small amount. 3%, like, 3, 6, 9, 12, 50. Like, it doesn't really add up until you have a lot of it. So you don't even have to really bother with it early and mid-game. But you have... You have the pals that, that are working constantly. They're constantly happy and in good condition. You know how to keep them good and safe and happy. You know how to keep all your crafting benches going. You have all the best pals for all the best activities. You have the strongest party with the most mobility. You're all set and ready to go. That's the guide. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like. This took a very long time to make. 
And uh, I really hope that you enjoyed that uh, little um, workaround at the very start of the video. So if you skipped ahead, you missed the juiciest part. I teach you how to get a makeshift handgun at level four. So don't like go, go rewind and go watch that part. That's the best. That's the real juicy part of the video here. <laughs> Look at him. He's jumping with me. Hell yeah. <laughs> he's happy just like me. Okay. Oh, time to fly. Anyway. Leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you think. If you know any other super fast start tricks, look at he's jumping, that's so cool. Uh, let me know, and finally, on the right side of your screen is a video that you should absolutely click. And if you don't click it, then the next time you order a pizza, they're not going to give you as many ingredients as they would someone else.